Senator-elect cries out over inability to take seat in Cross River State and a fear of abductions lead to shutdown of 618 schools in the north. This is Plus Politics and I am Mary Ann Ocon. Senator-elect for Cross River North Senatorial District, Mr. Agom Jarigbe, has cried out over alleged delay by the Senate President, Ahmed Lawan, to swear him into office. To discuss this with me is the Senator-elect for Cross River North Senatorial District, uh, Honorable Agom Jarigbe. It's good to have you join us. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Yeah, um, I'm going to start with all that has happened that has culminated to this. Um, walk us through the events that led up to the Supreme Court's ruling. A lot of people have heard from your, your perspective, a lot of people have heard from your opponent's perspective, but people want to know exactly what led to this. How did this start? Okay, I'll give you a best idea view of, of how it all started. Well, um, on account of the demise of um, our late senator, Senator Rose Oko, there was a by-election, and um, we went in, went in for the primaries. Before the primaries, um, there was um, a court case which decided that um, the authentic delegates list should be used, including the Word and Chapter High Schools. That judgment came and um, it was obeyed. INEC was sent to, to monitor the elections. And when we got to the field, there was an attempt by a faction of the PDP led by the governor to use um, the wrong list and the INEC monitor that was sent to monitor, assigned officially to monitor the elections, refused. And a lot of us also said, no, we we're not going to allow the use of that list. Um, we insisted. The governor's people brought some armed men who started shooting at people. We have the videos and we can show people, we can show Nigerians that um, the animalistic approach to that election was unparalleled. Well, we went on and on and we, we insisted that uh, the right thing should be done. And the authentic delegates list, which uh, was made available to the INEC monitor as he came in, was used to conduct the primaries that I missed. Um, we had a divided panel that came from the party. Uh, part of the panel went to the group that were interested in using the wrong delegates list, and the other panel went with us. But we conducted the elections, and I missed. I wrote its report and uh, confirmed the fact that I missed, and I was the right candidate or the authentic candidate of the party. The panel that also submitted its report to the party headquarters also confirmed that I won the election. Uh, uh, but um, the governor decided to use his might and um, on the party, and the name of uh, Stephen Ode was sent to INEC. But with court judgments right now, from the trial court to the Supreme Court, I have been affirmed the authentic candidate of the PDP in that by-election. And that's where we are. Interesting. I did speak to your opponent, even though he refused to come live on the show, but I did speak to him on the phone. And he did say that um, it was a split decision. In fact, he did say, uh, according to some of the um, information that he gave us, was he said that you walked out and that you did not contest in that primaries and so he's wondering how you could have emerged as the winner. Did you indeed walk out on the day of these, this primary? Because all of the papers that we have been given shows that Stephen O'Day emerged at the end of the day as the winner at that primaries. And your name was nowhere to be found, including the letters uh, that were sent or the press release by the party um, headquarters in Abuja stating that O'Day was the winner of the election. So really... It, it, it makes it 
suspicious for one to believe what you're saying. Anyway, um, you didn't ask me for the papers that confirmed my victory at the polls, at the primary elections. If you had asked me, I would make them available. And if you have been looking at the court papers, um, you know the courts will, put not, will not put something on nothing. Um, all these cases were, were instituted by, by originating summons and it's affidavit evidence, which has to do with documents. And those documents were made available in court. And um, in line with Section 87 of the Electoral Act, you know clearly that INEC is supposed to monitor these elections and not observe. And INEC has written his reports on this issue. Are you saying that um, it was a concocted report? No. The elections took place. I took part in the elections properly. I had the delegates. Why should I run away from an election that the court affirmed my list as the authentic delegate? while the governor's group was fighting to change it and they are still fighting to change it in flagrant abuse of the, of the, of the Supreme Court's judgments. My, my question is... So I, I stated on it vocally that, that, that I was the candidate, I remain the candidate of the PDP, the senator-elect. And if you want documents made available to you, I will make the documents available to you, including the INEC report and the report of the electoral panel. So my question is... So that's the position. The party right here will always want to pick and choose. And that's... that's, that's exactly. That's where I want to come section in. Section 87 of the Electoral Act. That is where I want to come in. Before now, we did not realize that there was a faction in the PDP and that there was a faction that was for the governor and that there was a faction that was against the PDP, uh, the, uh, the governor. Um, at what point did the PDP in Cross River State begin to have factions? Because I'm, I'm yet to understand why there would be a faction in the first instance. Again, I'd like to just bring something to your notice. And I'm sure because you have your own facts, I would like to go with your facts too. But on September 20, uh, 2020, I beg your pardon, the PDP National Secretariat released a statement saying that you made spurious allegations against the National Working Committee over your failure at the party primaries. And they referred to you not being uh, the winner as a failure. And they also said that um, they recognized the candidature of Mr. Ode. And I, I do have the papers with the PDP's um, logo and the date on it. Um, is that something that the court has also reversed? Because I'm, I'm wondering, why would the party put out that statement if they had written a report stating that there was a split? of decisions on the day of the uh, primaries, as you have mentioned, and that this, the list, the original list that was sent was with the party, um, sorry, the INEC official that was there to conduct that election. Okay, you did not ask me for my own documents, and you are putting up um, um, documents from well, the, I want, the other I want faction, you to verify and this is a lopsided one. I, I want to, but I, I like exactly. to state on it locally. I want to state unequivocally here that um, uh, whatever you saw from the legal advisor of PDP was bias. And I have said it too, that they are money mongers. They are money mongers. Where have you seen a governor lose elections in his own party, a primary elections? It doesn't work because they, 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 they are the money bags. You understand, but the governor and, uh, was not they running. Influence the party the way they want to influence the party, but, but God the, did not allow that happen in this situation. I'm sorry, the governor is not here to speak for himself, and I'm not in any way, you know, trying to speak for the governor. But this wasn't his election. This was a senator Cross River State senatorial, um, northern senatorial election. So, um, why would the governor be interested in that particular election? What's in it? For because him? the governor brought his boy to become a senator that will hand over to him in 2023 and if you see the but number the of, has been a of security before. presence there brought by the governor on the day of the election and why they will kill my supporter in the house of one of his commissioners you should ask all those questions i'm sorry that's an allegation that we are not privy to why would anybody be okay killed? i'm giving it to you live and it's on national tv interesting let's move away from that because and i don't want to controversial well, I, I, we, again, we do not want to feed this allegation because we do not have that information. But let's talk more about... You have, it, you have the information now. 
Well, and we do not have from a member we do not of parliament. Have facts. We do on not have TV. we do not have facts as to what, what happened or what transpired. Anybody can bring a what word of mouth on TV. Want. It's about the death of a person. We have to be factual about these things. We want to ban from okay, on TV. We was want to be sure. in the house of a commissioner. Interesting. And they brought armed men to shoot at people. The what? DSS is aware. The security agencies are aware. They have the reports. Does the police have this information also? Is it made they public? They do. They do. They do. Interesting. Let's talk about your opponents. Like I said, I did speak to him and he... He was very, he vehemently refused that, um, refused the Supreme Court um, ruling. He did say that that was, that there is nowhere in that Supreme Court judgment that succinctly said that you were to take over that seat. It only did say, according to him, that um, the, uh, uh, the appeal was struck out. According to him, I had a f telephone conversation with him. He says that it explicitly says, that he is, he still is, that he is a sitting senator and nobody can take that seat from him. Um, and he says that you should get your facts straight. That's what he said to you? Yes. Okay. Anyway, um, you, know, you know what we have before us is a Supreme Court judgment. Yes, we do. He appealed. He applied to join. He sought the leave of the court to join as interested party. He was granted at the court of appeal. He appealed the judgment to the Supreme Court. It's not my fault that he got a lawyer who filed a notice of appeal that was incompetent. A defective notice of appeal what was what struck out that matter, what was responsible. And this matter is not a novelty. We have a plethora of cases that have been decided in this direction. When a notice of appeal is defective, it goes to the roots of the matter, it's fundamental. Every lawyer knows that. So in this case, there was no appeal before the Supreme Court and the Supreme Court struck it out. The subsisting judgment which was upheld is the judgment of the appeal court, which affirmed my candidature. Interesting. So I don't know what Stephen is talking about. What is, his adumbration is neither here nor there. What is your party, the PDP, at the national level saying about this right now? Yes, of course, the notice of that Supreme Court judgment is everywhere. It's been on the national dailies. You've spoken about it. I saw your interview, uh, the last one you did on a, another TV station. But where does your party stand on this issue right now? Has there been a press release to that what, effect? What, 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 whatever my party stands for at this point in time is inconsequential when there is a Supreme Court judgment. We might be discussing it socially or as an academic exercise, but it doesn't, it doesn't add up here right now. Interesting. Okay. Now you're... You, the, you, you put out a statement asking that the Senate president swears you in to make sure that you take your seat as a senator-elect because of that Supreme Court statement. What is the Senate president's stance right now? What is the delay? Have you spoken to him? What is the Senate going to do about it? Because now there's a court judgment that has uh, somewhat vindicated you, as you say. Uh, what do you think the next step is going to be coming from the Senate president? Anyway, there's nothing personal about this. Uh, I'm not talking about the Senate president as a person. I'm talking about the Senate leadership um, as it stands right now. And um, I have inalienable rights to that seat as it stands. And I don't think that uh, I will be de deprived of my rights and the mandate given, graciously given to me by my people. So, and, and this is what you're saying to the Senate leadership to make sure that they give you your seat back um i don't need to say it to them they should they, they know they have to do the needful and what's and it? That's it. That's it. let's go back to the party politics in the state and i'm very curious as to why um the governor would be standing against you and you've made several spurious allegations uh to this um before before the primaries in itself were you in um, a good relationship, a good place with the governor? Well, the governor 
is um, is our governor. Yes, I stood for him to become governor, and um, I supported him to go back for a second time. But um, the governor is a megalomaniac. He wants everything for himself, for himself and his younger brother. And that is the crux of the problem in Cross River State. You're, go, you're, you're finally going to where I want to. So is it because all of a sudden, did you just all of a sudden realize how, in your words, how the governor wants everything for himself when you were supporting him? Or is it just because at, at this point, it doesn't favor you, hence, you know, the outburst? It's not about favoring me. He was never governor. I took him on face value because he was a senator. And I said, look, this is the highest political office holder in the North. And this position is zoned to the North. Let's support him to go because he was the senator. And that's all. No, I've never, I've never benefited anything from him. I, not for pecuniary benefits or whatever. When he was a senator, he, I never went to his office. I didn't ask him for any favors. Not even for a letter of recommendation for anybody. Are you saying that the governor didn't support you when you were running it. for House of Representatives? You, you, the governor yeah. didn't give you his support before he became governor? How would he give me support? He, has no capa he had no capacity to give me any support at the time. I'm from Obuja Ayala, and he's from Obudu, Bekwara of Baniko. He had no capacity to give me any support. I, I want you to do some investigative journalism, you know, just like you did, to get the documents you got and find out what my standing is with my people. And you will know if it is the governor that has to give me any support. Now, I, I'm, digging, I'm digging at you because I want to succinctly just get some facts out from you. Because there are people who have also said that, um, there are people who have criticized and said that you were in, you know, the governor's good books. You, were, uh, you played a part in all of the things that he did in the state. And all of a sudden, you're fighting the governor and then you are fighting the party. And they're saying that you are trying to divide the party in the state. And this is also what your opponent is saying, that you are just trying to play the script of the opposition. What do you say about this? You see, the truth about it is this. Um, we will not support ineptitude. And we will not allow people bury the legacies we are trying to consolidate on. We had Donald Duke as governor, we had Leah Limuki as governor. Um, we did not have this group of comedians we have in Cross River State right now. And if we allow it, you know, we are going to um, give authenticity to some form of illegality. And we're not going to allow that. But there are those who would say that you, you paved the way for these group of comedians, in your words, to take, uh, to take power in Cross River State. And this, this apparently has brought Cross River State into a state of shambles. Are you now awake to your responsibilities to retrieve the state from the comedians that you refer to? Um, the truth about it is this, we have to salvage our state. And uh, uh, fortunately for me, you are Cross River and you need to be part of this movement. It's a clarion call. Otherwise, we'll be doing a disservice to our people. And how, how do you intend to do this? This is, a, are... this is a government that has not completed any projects. They came up with um, uh, what, whatever they call legacy projects and all of that. Please, which of them has been completed? 800 and something days to the end of the administration. Which of them? Not one. And there's no hope in sight. And you call it a government? What are we talking about here? Quickly, before I have projects, I have projects in all the twenty-four wards of my of my federal constituency. Not one project. Four, five, six projects in each ward of my federal constituency. Yes. Let me let me let me hit you with my last question because I'm I'm very interested in that. When you said we we need to consolidate, we need it's a clarion call. Who's we? The uh, people who are, who are positive-minded in Cross River State. It's not about the food on the table thing, you know. It has a way of making people reason from a parochial perspective. And we don't belong there.
You see, a government that is run by people who were properly deprived growing up is a problem. It's a problem. The psychology of deprivation is very bad. What do you mean by people who were deprived? Are you making reference to a particular person? <laughs> no. <laughs> so what do you mean by people who were deprived? And deprived of what exactly? Let's just well, um, I've, I've stated the obvious here. Yeah, and um, you should know where I'm coming from. I wish I did. I grew up properly. Hmm? Well brought up from a home. So I have something to hold on to. And integrity matters. Not people that have a, 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 a litany of, um, of, of uh, corruption cases before EFCC. And they come and sit on national TV and call you a, a chief that wants to steal a mandate. People that have been confirmed as, as, as fraudulent people by the, even the appeal court of this federation, the judgments are there. They sit on national TV and call you. A man tells you he's DJ of due process and he's aiding and abetting in all the siphoning of funds in Cross River State and he calls you a thief, he calls you a fraudulent person, he calls you someone of questionable character. So going forward now, um, and get very vociferous. I, I mean, let, let's just fo let's focus on the conversation. In, going forward, what should be the next step or what, the next line of action? Of course, and we, like I said earlier on, you're still waiting on the Senate president and, of course, the leadership of the Senate to um, do the necessary. But what happens next? I mean, it's been days since after the Supreme Court judgment. And what if nothing comes from the corridors of power in the Senate? What would be your next move or next line of action? The National Assembly, where I belong to, is not an irresponsible institution. Court judgments must be obeyed. The rule of law must be kept. And I know the judiciary has interpreted the law. The INEC has issued me a certificate of, re of return, implementing that as the executive. The National Assembly, the Senate, will swear me in, in line with the rule of law. That's where I stand. And I have no doubts. Okay. Well, I want to say thank you very much, Honorable Jaribe Agam. He is the Senator-elect Cross River uh, North, North and Senatorial District. Uh, thank you very much for speaking with us. We wish you all the best in your dealings. Bye. All right. We'll take a short break and when we come back, we'll be talking about six states in the north which have closed their schools for fear of the abductions that have been going on. Stay with us. We'll be right back.